Hey, how's it going? Pete Gallo here from Philadelphia Waterscapes. Hey everybody, Pete Gallo here from Philadelphia Waterscapes. We're on location today in southeastern Pennsylvania and as you can see behind me here, we've got a pretty large pond installation that we're doing. A lot of this yard got torn up because we actually had to put a drain underneath of this pond to deal with a lot of hydrostatic pressure and storm water that wanted to build up underneath the pond. So our client here wants the best quality of water that you can get in a koi pond. So there are a number of ways to do that. Today we're going to show you how we install wetland filters on ponds and we'll walk you through the process and show you how these products from Aquascape that we use help to maintain the best water quality throughout the year and a more natural looking feature. So our client here is going to have us install a wetland filter on his large koi pond. Now a wetland filter is pretty much an upgrade to your typical waterfall box. If you're familiar with uh, Biofalls box from Aquascape, you'll already know that it's pretty much a plastic box in the ground, water from your pump. Your pump's basically pumping water up through the box, usually goes through two filter pads and maybe a bag of either lava rock or bio balls. And that's pretty much your filtration before you go back into your waterfalls and spill back in the pond. This concept is a little different. For the wetland filter, we're gonna have a, an Aquascape snorkel vault. We're gonna have the centipede module, also from Aquascape, that connects in to the vault, and aqua blocks. So, the idea here, instead of your pond tubing sending water up into a waterfall box, we're actually gonna send water into this tube right here, this centipede module, and then this module will basically sit deeper into the ground than the rest of the floor, which you'll see soon in our dig out and excavation process. So we, the idea is we'll want this to always sit flush and flat so that these blocks above the centipede can sit flat. The idea will be that water will rise through, make its way through the aqua blocks, and above the aqua blocks, we're gonna have three layers of gravel of three different sizes of gravel. We're gonna have a larger gravel, typically a minimum of five to eight inches in size stone, basically just to encapsule, encapsulate these products and make sure they're safe and sturdy in the ground, in the liner, of course. And then above that, we'll have another layer of gravel, typically one to three inch, uh, river jack gravel and then above the river jack the one to three inch river jack gravel we're going to have a layer of three quarter inch river jack gravel now the idea will be that when the water is rising through those three layers of gravel it's going to filter out all the waste all the excess food that may be uh, breaking down that the fish don't eat whatever gets consumed whatever does not get consumed in the pond, any solids like leaves that break down through the year and maybe just don't make their way into the bottom of the pond and just when those all that stuff when those solids break down we're gonna need a way to capture them and make it easy for us to clean it out of the pond. So this wetland filtration system is gonna keep some crystal clear water throughout the year and help us filter out all that little sediment all the little sedimentary uh, items that may be uh, causing your pond to have some dirty water. So we have completed our excavation of the area. We completed our extra excavation of the deeper spots where we're gonna actually install our snorkel and vault and plumbing and aqua blocks. So we have, just like any traditional pond installation, we have underlayment actually underneath our liner here, which I'm sure you saw in the video before. And obviously the rubber liner, 45 mil EPDM. We don't use anything less. And 
since we're going to be putting some hard plastic items inside of the rubber liner, we usually like to put an extra layer of underlayment down before we lay in those items, like for instance the aqua blocks. The cubes on them, they have pretty sharp ends, and we don't want those sharp ends to really just make direct contact with the rubber here, which could cause a puncture. So we like to cushion that end of those with a little extra underlayment. And you'll see us doing the same thing in intake bays and negative edges.